If you've been having some problems with your camera's face and eye detection system misbehaving, not acting like you want it to act, I wanted to take some time here to go over how exactly face and eye detection works and then some tips that you can use to make sure that you are getting those eyes, those faces, those subjects sharp when you're using this kind of system. And it's important to really understand exactly what this system is doing and how this system works so that we can troubleshoot when it's not working or so we know how to use it better. Face and eye detection uh, really started, I think back in 2007, it was when the first face detection system really uh, came out in digital cameras. And this was trained to detect the shapes of the human face, like the eyes, nose, and the mouth, and the camera would see that pattern and then say, oh, that's a human face. And then it would send the autofocus system over there to lock on to that human face so that when you commanded autofocus, your focus point would already be right there. A few years later, this evolved into eye detection, where now the camera, instead of just looking for the patterns of the human face, was looking for the patterns of the human eye and would now put that focus point on that eye, which is where the connection really happens between the viewer and the photograph is that eye connection. So it's important to make sure that the eye is sharp and this system is able to now recognize those eyes. It would later evolve to, you know, cameras now have subject detection systems where they can identify shapes of animals like horses or airplanes and even the cockpit of an airplane but it's all based on pattern recognition. The camera has been trained for these patterns for recognizing faces, eyes, bikes, you know, whatever it is. And so if that pattern is not easily apparent to the camera, then the system isn't going to work very well. Although in recent years, they have been making a lot of advances in this technology. It is becoming a lot better really quick but still, you have to know what's happening behind the scenes in order to use this properly. So the first problem you may encounter is that the camera is not detecting a face or an eye where it should. And this can happen for a variety of reasons, but it all goes back to that pattern recognition. So if your subject is too far away from the camera, so it's too small in the frame, the camera is not going to be able to clearly make out those eyes, nose and mouth or if your subject is wearing a hat or glasses where the eyes aren't clearly visible, then that face and eye detection may not work well. So you need to make sure that your subject is large enough in the frame and the face and eyes are clearly visible. You don't want to be wasting a bunch of time you know, looking through your viewfinder, waiting for the camera. Come on, there's a face there. Recognize the face, lock onto the face. You don't wanna be waiting for that you need to be able to override the system if it's just not detecting something that is there and then go back, revert to the more uh, conventional methods of putting your focus point on the subject yourself. Another problem that it's not as common, but I've seen it a few times, is the camera detecting something that's not even there. So here I am on the beach, I'm pointing the camera at this dock, and the camera has picked up a facial pattern. Remember, it's been trained to recognize patterns. I don't see the pattern. I don't see what I think are eyes, nose, and a mouth, but the camera does. And so it has placed that focus box over where it thinks that pattern is. And now when I command autofocus, I'm gonna be commanding autofocus on that point way out there. On top of that, most of these systems will also adjust your exposure when it detects a face or an eye. So if it's toggling back and forth between detecting a face that is not there and not detecting anything, you'll notice two problems. Both your exposure will change and your focus point will change from where you had set it. So you need to be able to, again, override this system. So I would just recommend that unless you are photographing something that your camera has been trained to recognize, like a person or an animal or a vehicle, just turn the system completely off because you don't want to be like photographing a landscape. You're ready to press the shutter button halfway, command autofocus, take that picture, 
And then suddenly the camera says, oh wait, I see an airplane over here where there's really no airplane. And even when everything is working perfectly, you still might get blurry eyes when you know that that camera put that focus box around that eye and that's where it was focused, the eye is still blurry. Well, I did a video about this last week about the problems of photographing at completely wide open apertures like F1 or F1.2 with longer focal lengths and closer focus distances. Your depth of field is measured in millimeters and the eye detection system it's trained to put the box around the shape of the eye, and that includes the eyelashes. So even though that box might be around the eye, when you command autofocus, it might actually lock onto the eyelashes. And if you have an extremely shallow depth of field, the eyelashes may be sharp, but the actual pupil itself might be outside of that depth of field. It might be behind it, so the eyes are blurry. So that's just one case where you know, you think it's working perfectly and it's still not sharp. In that case, you should just stop down a few stops. Stop down to F2 or F2.8 so that if the autofocus system is tracking that eye but it locks on to the eyelash, you're going to have a deeper depth of field where now the pupil falls into that depth of field and you get some sharp eyes. You also need to make sure you're in the proper focus mode. Even though the face and eye detection system is going to put a box around whatever it is it's detecting and then track it throughout the screen as that moves. If you are in single shot autofocus, AFS or one shot, and you command autofocus, it's gonna lock on where that detection system is in that instant in time. And then if your subject moves, like it moves away from you or it moves towards you, and that focus distance changes, the face and eye detection system is done tracking as you are holding that autofocus down. It's not going to update that when your subject moves. So if your subject is moving at all, you need to make sure that you are in continuous autofocus, AFC or servo, to make sure that as you are holding that autofocus button down and your subject is moving and that box is staying over that face or the eye, it's going to continue to update that focus distance as your subject moves towards you or away from you to make sure that you get that sharp photo. So those are some common problems that you might encounter when using face and eye detection and more importantly, why that's happening. So here's some other things that you can do to kind of override the system when you are encountering these things to make sure that you are still getting sharp photos. And the first one is to just know your system. These systems are getting a lot better, but they're not 100% perfect. So you need to be ready for like the two to 3% of times where it's not working. Know how the system behaves, know what the camera's looking for, go to your camera manual and read about face and eye detection, read about the situations where your camera might struggle. If you don't care to know about the system in your camera, then you honestly shouldn't be using it. You can't blame the camera when it's behaving like it's supposed to. And then you need to have a plan to quickly override the system when you're encountering those problems that we just looked at. You need to be able to revert to the traditional focus methods, autofocus or manual focus, when face and eye detection isn't working so that you're not wasting time trying to figure out how to make it work. Just override it. In Fujifilm cameras, for example, you can program a custom control to toggle face and eye detection or subject detection on and off. Real estate is limited on a lot of these cameras for how much you can customize it, but if you are having these problems, then you may want to think about dedicating one of your controls to either enabling or disabling this system. In Nikon cameras, there's no dedicated face and eye detection on and off function that you can program to a custom control, but there's a way around that. You can program a custom button to switch to an autofocus area mode where face and eye detection is going to be disabled. Like the single point or the dynamic area autofocus modes, face and eye detection just doesn't work with those modes. So if you have one of these problems, you can press that button, face and eye detection is going to be disabled, and then you can put that focus point over whatever it is you're trying to focus on. 
So those are just two examples of how you can quickly overcome these problems in Fujifilm and Nikon cameras and other cameras. Look for ways where you can quickly disable the system or switch to a different focus mode if you need to. And then you need to practice it. Say it all the time. You need to practice this so that when it really matters, you're ready for it. Face and eye detection is a tool to help us. It's not a miracle solution to make sure that faces and eyes are in focus all the time. Like all other camera tools, we have to know what's going on, know how to use the system and practice using it. If you have any other questions or comments, other things for using face and eye detection more efficiently, please let me know in the comments. Subscribe for more great tips like this every week, and we'll see you in the next video.